This is Jack Tan. She's the original slum dog millionaire. That's because she wasn't always very rich. In fact, she was poor as a church mouse. She and her widowed mother were about to be evicted and made homeless by their money-minded landlord for being unable to pay the rent when overnight she became rich. Back then, there was no 4D, no Toto, no game shows, and no way to suddenly get rich without marrying a prince. So how did Jack make her fortune when she was only 12 years old? Did she make her money legitimately? The village matriarch, Gigpo, certainly asked those questions. Is there a connection between Jack becoming rich and a dead giant with a broken neck just outside the hovel that Jack shared with her mother? Gigpo decided to investigate. She read up on the ABC of detection. Assume nothing. Believe no one. Check everything. Gigpo dropped in on Jack and asked her a series of probing questions. Jack, how did the giant come to be lying dead outside your gate? He fell from the beanstalk. What was he doing on the beanstalk? He was climbing down it. Why was he climbing down it? He was chasing me. Why was he chasing you? Because he's a bad chap. Why is he bad? Because he killed my brave father and brothers and stole our family castle and treasures. How do you know that? Because an old lady told me. Jack recounts the story of how her mother had asked her to sell their last remaining possessions for rent and food and how she sold the cow for beans which her mother threw out of the window, which grew into a giant beanstalk that reached into the sky, and how she climbed up it just to see what was at the top, and how an old lady met her and told her that there was a giant and his wife living in the castle with a goose that laid golden eggs, and a lot of other treasure beside that really belonged to her family, and how the giant had killed her brave father and brothers, which resulted in her and her mother being the only survivors of the rampage and pillage. Jack told Gigpo that the old lady told her that it was therefore right and just to get back the golden goose and then get back everything else since she was entitled to them. So she took the goose first. But, said Gigpo, how did you know the beans were magic? Why did you assume that it was right to take the goose? Why did you believe the old lady? Didn't you check that the story was true? Was it right just to run away with the goose? Wait a minute. How did that giant fall off the beanstalk? Did he slip? How can you say you don't know? So Jack had to admit that the giant was chasing her down the beanstalk. And to prevent the giant from catching up, she chopped down the beanstalk. And that's when the giant fell down and died. Is Jack guilty of killing the giant? Should she pay the penalty for murder or was it homicide? Is she a thief? Should she be in jail? Is she justified in her actions? Could she have got her family's possessions back some other way? Is there an alternative solution which would have been less problematic? What if Jack sells the cow for beans after having asked the seller to show proof the beans were indeed magical? She met the old lady and asked for proof that the story was true, and the old lady proved that she knew Jack's mother. The old lady mentions the chip molar at the back of her mouth caused by cracking it on a walnut given to her by Jack's father on their 15th anniversary, which was the year before Jack was born, and that she has the other half of a pair of earrings which had dropped off as Jack and her mother were running away from the giant. Jack can't sue the giant. She can't afford a lawyer. So she has challenged the giant to a duel, and like David, will slay the giant with a stone and a sling, thus fighting fairly and squarely, following the convention of the time for the return of her property. This is how Gig Po, the village busybody, became a detective. What are the characteristics of a critical thinker? What questions did Gig Po ask? How did she use her comprehension skills?